into myself again But it's the only way you're ever gonna learn your love back And it's all in the past Hi, welcome along to a special edition of NUFC Matters, where I interview Alan Shearer about his forthcoming 260 dinner. For information on the dinner, go to www.260dinner.co.uk. And uh, the first one is uh, your Premier League record. What does it mean to you when you look back? Oh, it's huge, yeah. I mean, I've, uh, I don't know how long I've had it, uh, probably over 20 years now, Um but yeah, it's uh, maybe even more. Um, it's brilliant. I mean, I keep going back to the scruffy little kid that grew up in Park Avenue in Gosforth. Um, so to see uh, to see my name at the top of the Premier League list when you look at the amazing players that we've we've had in this uh, in this league, then yeah, I'm I'm very proud of it. Absolutely. Can you tell us what your favourite all time goal is for for club and for country? Well, that's a difficult question. Um, for country, um, I think it would have to be that second goal against Holland in Euro 96. You know, that atmosphere that night was just amazing. Myself, I got two and Teddy got two. Um, if there was a perfect performance, then then that was it for England. So to be part of it and that, that second goal because of the atmosphere and everything else, and then probably that one. For Newcastle, that's a tough one. Um, I'm gonna. I, I think I'll have to say the the moment I broke Jackie Milburn's record because because of what and who Jackie was uh, to the to the to Newcastle. He was my dad's hero. Again, I mean, I I never thought one day that signing for Newcastle I'd ever get anywhere near that record. So, for me to break it that day, and I'll I'll never forget that atmosphere that afternoon. It will stay with me forever. I mean, it was one of those. One of those moments where the uh, it was uh, the hairs on the back of your neck moment. It was um, it was just unbelievable. I never I never wanted the, the referee to uh, to blow his whistle that day. And there's not been many games like that. I'm normally absolutely knackered and shattered, but I just didn't want him to blow that day because of the atmosphere. It made me feel so special. What was your favourite ground to play at, other than St James's Park, of course? Um. Uh, I mean, Wembley was always great with England. Um, not so good with not so good with Newcastle. I was pleased <laughs> when it got knocked down. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, I always enjoy going to Anfield. Um, I, I think there's a bit of respect there, and I think the Scousers are, are sort of similar to the Geordies in terms of how they uh, how they view their football, how passionate they are, how they go out and work all week to go and have a great time of the weekend in the way they support their football club. And I always felt they appreciated a half-decent player when you went out at Anfield. They, uh, they, they let you know that. So, um, yeah, Anfield was, was a great stadium. Is there a game that you enjoyed most for club and for country? Well, I mean, I said that uh, uh, the two games that I've, that I've mentioned, I think that, um, that Portsmouth game when I broke the record, uh, that Holland game, and during Euro '96, is one of the best atmospheres I've uh, I've played in. So probably uh, probably those two. I mean, I've got so many special moments. I mean, the semi-finals for Newcastle. I mean, those two semi-finals at Old Trafford. Uh, I remember looking at the stadium, thinking my uh, my family's up in that stand, and I could actually see the stadium was the the, the stand was rocking. It was moving. The, the 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 atmosphere was that special. So those two semi-finals were amazing as well. Who were the best managers that you had for club and country, Alan? Um, I, 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 I was very reluctant to name one because there's so many played huge parts in, in my career. I mean, Kenny Daglish at, uh, at Blackburn when I went there and for us to win the league with, with Kenny as manager to, to, to come in and little old Blackburn take on the might of, uh, of Man United and beat them. And for what Kenny did for me as a as a player at, uh, at Blackburn was just unbelievable. Um, obviously, Sir Bobby he he saved my Newcastle career um, and it, because I was on my way out. I would have had to have left, and he came in and got me got me back playing, got me back smiling, got me back enjoying my football. And for what he did for Newcastle to to come in and take us from the bottom to Champions League football was was an unbelievable achievement. So, so Bobby was great. I mean, and, and Terry Venables at uh, at, um, at England was just unbelievable. And Glenn Hoddle, you know, Glenn Hoddle gave me the England captaincy. So that was one of the biggest and best things that could ever happen to me in my career, to 
to go out and captain England. So he was a huge influence as well. Do you ever wonder how many goals you might have scored if injury <clears throat> hadn't cut short, um, you know, those seasons? Yeah, a lot more. <laughs> um, I mean, I missed, I think I missed about three years of, of football with the, the injuries that I had. Um, at last count, I think it was 15 operations. I had, I mean, and the, and the three serious injuries that kept me out. Um, seven months, seven months, and just under seven months, my ankle and my left knee and my right knee. So, yeah, uh, yeah, I would have, I would have scored a, uh, quite a few more, obviously. Um, but you know what? I just think if you, if you go throughout your career, particularly with the pace of the game nowadays, if you go throughout your career without having one serious injury, you've, you've been really fortunate. But, um, yeah, it was just unfortunate that I had three. <laughs> Do you think Harry Kane could break your Premier League record and um, would he be a good custodian if he did? And would you like to have played alongside Harry Kane? Well, I wouldn't have liked to have played alongside him because we'd never we would have been shooting from rolled ridiculous angles. Um, you've got to be pretty selfish as a centre forward, and he was and I was in terms of scoring goals. Um, you've got to do that to to get where where he wants to be and where I was. So, uh, yeah, he's got a he's got a very very good opportunity. I mean, there's a lot of ifs and buts uh, attached to that. If he stays injury free, if he stays at Tottenham, if he were to go to I don't know the likes of. Man City. I mean, he would, he would probably uh, obliterate it within three or four years um, if he went to to Man City. So, um, and he's uh, he's twenty nine, I think, this summer. So, absolutely, he's got a he's got a he's got a really good chance of of breaking it. Do I want him to? Well, probably not. No, because I like seeing myself at the at the at the top of the list. But um, uh, it it'll go one day. And uh, if it goes, and then, then then yeah, absolutely, he would uh, he would be worthy of it definitely. If the record's broken, do you think a Newcastle player will have, ever hold that record again? Um, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, that's a really tough one. That is. I mean, I hope so. That means that Newcastle will be will be doing something and going somewhere. Absolutely. Um, I hope that would happen one day. But I mean, we're talking too far ahead. If it were, then. Me or you probably won't be here, so it won't affect us. <laughs> Chris Wood is obviously the, uh, the you know, the, the striker who all of our hopes have, you know, relied on over the last few weeks. It's been a great turnaround by Eddie Howe as well. How do you think Eddie Howe's done? How do you think Chris Wood's done? Eddie's done a, an amazing job, yeah. I mean, where we were, struggled at first to get the results, got knocked out of the FA Cup. Um, but the transformation of... Um, some of the players has been remarkable from the position that we were in to where we are now. Not guaranteed safety, but it certainly looks like we'll be playing Premier League football next season. And um, I wasn't comfortable or, or confident at all with saying that in the back end of December, early early uh, early January. Um, so that's not my phone, by the way. <laughs> it's okay. Um, yeah, it's uh, so. Yeah, we're. Um, we're in a much healthier position um, and Chris Wood's played a part in that. He hasn't scored as many goals as he would have liked or we would have wanted. Um, but I think what he has done really well is he's, he's created space for others to go into and take ad advantage of that. Um, and hopefully he can get in between now and the end of the season, he, he can go and get a, a few more goals. Looking ahead to the summer, um, you know, should we be in the Premier League? I think I'm very confident we will be. Dream striker, Alan. Do you think we'll bring somebody in? We've talked about Harry Kane. How good would it be to see him break the record in a black and white shirt? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there is at Newcastle. I'm, I'm pretty. It'll start in the next two or three weeks if it hasn't started already. That Newcastle will be linked with every single player come the uh, come the summer. Um, but that's not a bad thing considering where we were twelve months ago. Um, who, I mean. I just want someone to come in and 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 that's what that's what we've missed this season with uh, with Callum's injury. But you know, with Callum's injury record at some stage of the season, he was going to get injured. And our problem was we didn't have anyone really to come in and, and replace him and, and score the goals. So um, someone's going to be lucky enough to come in as a forward and play in that position. I know what it's like. Uh, whoever that may be, I hope they can they can go out and score us loads of goals and, and get the adulation that, that someone deserves because I had a, 
I had that and it's an unbelievable feeling. So um, whoever it may be, I think the key is, is absolutely scoring goals because that's what we missed this season. And Wilson's coming back as well. Hopefully, you know, he'll get a chance to, to score a few. And he's the latest wearer of the number nine shirt as well, isn't he? Yeah, that's right. I mean, when it's unfortunate because uh, throughout Callum's career, he's, he's always managed to pick up injuries. So you sort of know at some stage of the season um, because of his history that, um, yeah, he's, he's not going to be playing. But when he does play, he offers us a threat in behind. He obviously gives us that... Um, that nous in the six-yard box in terms of where and when to be to put the ball in the back of the net. And that's a great skill in itself. And he's superb at doing that. And we've we've missed his his goals, absolutely. Yeah, 100%. Uh, OK, th- there is a real feel-good factor in the moment in the city. And obviously, we're, we're going to do this. Have you noticed the feel-good factor, Alan, when you're, you're oh, walking around? Yeah. And- it's a just it's a different place. I mean, it's a, it just a, it, absolutely. I said earlier about the, the, the feeling of what Newcastle fans want. They want to work all week. They want to be happy, and they want to have. A, they want to spend their money at the weekend by going to Newcastle United and then having a few drinks and dinner on a on a Saturday, Friday, Saturday night. Um, and absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's it's chalk and cheese from a year ago to what it is now. The city is buzzing. Um, everyone seems happy. Everyone's rowing in the same direction. There's not everyone arguing and sniping at each uh, at each other. Um, and that's what Newcastle United does for us. That's what it does for the region. It, we, we live and breathe our football. Um, so, yeah, it's a much healthier uh, healthier city now than it was a while ago. How excited are you about coming back to St James's Park for the 260 dinner? Yeah, I can't wait. I mean, I've been I've been to a couple of games in the last uh, in the last couple of weeks. I mean, the atmosphere is is amazing. It was back like what it was when I was playing. I mean, the grounds buzzing, war flags do a tremendous job creating that. Um, everyone's singing, everyone's happy before, during, and certainly after because of the results that we've uh, that we've had. So yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to um, to mixing with all the uh, with all the fans again. It'll be uh, it'll be a great night, and um, we'll have a few drinks and uh, and have a and, and have a superb night. I'm sure. Alan Shearer, thanks for your time, mate. Take care. Speak to you soon. Thank you. See you then. Cheers. So fantastic, really, to uh, to get Alan Shearer on to NUFC matters and answer a few questions ahead of the big dinner, the two sixty dinner. If you want some information on it, then go to www. 260dinner.co.uk and uh, celebrate the Premier League and Newcastle United's greatest ever goal scorer for one night only. Uh, There are tickets left, uh, but they are selling fast. Thanks once again to Alan Shearer for taking part and we hope to see you very, very soon at the night on April the 7th. (laughs) 